Well, hello, friends, and welcome back to our happy place on this marvelous Monday. I'm so glad that you came to join me for another session. I'm so, so happy. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. But if you're driving, keep your hands on the wheel. <laughs> Today's session is entitled, I Have a Race to Run, hence the running shoes. Okay, I'm going to uh, focus this on three scripture versions, but I'm going to read them uh, throughout the message. The first one is Philippians 3 and 14. It's in the New Living Translation. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us, all of us. The elders passed the baton to us, meaning this generation, my generation, your generation. Will we run it with the same grit, tenacity, faith, love, desire, passion, and determination as them? You have to answer that call. I'll never forget this. And this is why I'm entitled in this. There's an elder in our church, Sister Ruby. She came to me one prayer meeting um, before service many years ago. And she said, Sister Mary, I'm giving you the baton. She said, run this race. Hold on to this truth. And let nothing turn you away from it. Rise up, O daughter of Zion. Take your place. I'll never, ever forget those words. And now, years fast forward, I'm starting to realize what a great call that she placed on my life to say, run this race. Don't forget this precious truth. Let nothing stop you. And the same way with Paul, when he was preaching and he said, lay aside every weight, every weight, whatever it is that may be trying to stop you from running this race, whether it be fear, whether there may be people, whether there may be, um, I'm just not ready yet. Your own self, he say, lay it, lay it aside and run this race. God called all of us to run this race. The Lord saved his best for the, for the last. You're his best. He saved you for this time. So run your race, run it, and let nothing hinder you or stop you. You are counted as one of the best, so run your race. Don't focus on the competition, but focus on the prize, the goal. Heaven is worth it. Being able to live in eternity with Jesus, I say that's worth everything. That's worth a career, that's worth a a marriage that's worth my children, that's worth everything. My own flesh is worth it. To live with Jesus for eternity in heaven, it's worth it. So let's run our race. Now, in um, Galatians 5 and 7, Paul says, You are running the race so well. Who has held you back from following the truth? Because he says, not them that start the race, but it's them that endure to the end. We can't give up. As he's saying, who held you back from running? You were getting it and then you stopped. Why? Who held you back? And then he certainly says, it certainly isn't God. For he is the one who called you to freedom. You have freedom to run this race. There's no chains holding you. You have freedom. Run your race. Run your race. Heaven is worth it. Run your race. Whatever it takes. It may be like the track fielders that have to run that race and they have the hurdles. And you're running and you're running and you're running and here's a hurdle. But I notice what they do. They leap over it. 
So I'm running, I'm running, fear comes. Oh, I got to leap over it. I'm running, I'm running, doubt comes. I got to leap over it. I'm running, I'm running, I'm running. Financial struggles come. I got to leap over it. I'm running, I'm running, I'm running. My children start misbehaving. I got to leap over it. I'm running, I'm running, I'm running. Marital problems, I got to leap over it. I'm running, I'm running. My own self come before and I got to leap over it. Then I'm running, I'm running. Uh-oh, sickness come. I got to leap over it. It doesn't matter what it is. You take it as a hurdle and leap over it and keep running your race. Do not stop your race. Remember the old children's story, the tortoise and the hare? And all the tortoise was very, I mean, sorry, excuse me, the hare was very quick. He was running. But then he looked back and he saw that the old turtle, he was slow moving. So you know what he did? <laughs> he got a little big headed. I can rest. He's way behind me. So I'm going to sit down and relax. I'm going to even take a nap. It's a lesson to be learning there. We can't sleep in this race. It's a race of a lifetime. It's a race of eternity. We can't get so relaxed that, oh, somebody else is going to do it. Somebody else is going to make it. I got time. That's what the hare thought and what happened. Before, when he woke up, he saw that the old turtle crossed the finish line before him. Let's not allow that to be our story. Let's run our race with endurance. Lord, I know I got all this coming around me. Depression, anxiety, fear, doubt, marital problems, children problem, sickness, all of this death. But I can't stop. Because if I stop, I die. I sleep. And somebody else reaches the goal. That's not what God called us to do. He said, let every one of us run the race. That's me. That's you. That's our neighbor. That's the entire world. We must run this race. In Hebrews 12 and 1 in the Amplified Version. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses who by faith have testified to the truth of God's absolute faithfulness. Absolute faithfulness. God is faithful. Man may not be. I may not be. But he is faithful. You can depend on him. Stripping off every unnecessary weight and the sin which is so easily and cleverly entangles us. We got to strip it off. Oh, but the fear is gripping me so strong. I got to strip it off. Oh, but my friends, they're talking against me. People are talking. I got to strip it off. Because it doesn't matter what people have to say about you anyway. People is not your judge. People, I'm sorry, people are not your judge. English teacher here. They're not your judge. God is your judge. So it doesn't matter what people say or don't say. You're running this race because it's embedded in you to win. You have to make heaven your goal. So it doesn't matter about them. Let me tell you something. Let me get a little personal. I will be 45 this year. If I had to live my life on every time somebody said something negative about me, I would have been dead a long time ago. Because I know people that don't like me. And it's okay. It's okay. It is not for you to worry about how somebody else feels about you. That's on them. It is for you to worry about how Jesus feels about you. And if God says you are fearfully and wonderfully made, that's all it means. So run your race. Run your race. And he keeps on saying, let us run with endurance. I may be tired, but I got to keep running. I may be weak, but I got to keep running. I may not see the end of the road, but I got to keep running. I have to run it with endurance and active. Notice he says active. That means I'm not sitting down. I'm not chill on the side of the road. 
I'm not laying in my bed sleeping when I should be running. I'm active. Active persistence. The race that is set before us. We all have a race to run. We have to run that race. It's up to us to decide, are we going to run it? Or are we going to look and be like the old little bunny, hare, rabbit, whichever one you will? It's okay. It's okay. I can fall asleep. I'm going to still win. And then when we wake up, we realize, oh, we didn't make it. Oh, my. You have to run your race. Put your mind focus on what really matters. What really matters. And I just realized this. People, family, money, my own emotions that goes all over the place, all over the time, all the time because I'm a woman. Um, fear, anxiety, depression. Um, whatever it may be, whatever is your stumbling block, lay it aside and keep your mind focused. I have a race to run. I want to make it to heaven. I want to live with Jesus for eternity. So I'm going to run it. Yes, I see my hurdles. I'm going to leap over. Leap over. Take your leap. Sometimes it may be a leap of faith, but that's okay. That's okay that it's a leap of faith. Lord, I don't see it. It's dark out here. But I heard that he was a light in the darkness. Lord, I don't feel it. That's why we don't live for God on our feelings. Lord, I don't even know what's going on. But I trust you that I'm going to make it. So there go I leap over that hurdle. Whatever that hurdle may be. You start telling yourself, I'm a winner. I am a winner. I am going to win this race. I'm going to make it. Like the old timers used to say, come hell or high water, I got a race to run. And I'm running it by faith. I got to keep on running. I got to keep on running. I got to keep on running. Don't let nothing or anything or anyone stop you from running your race. I would be a liar to tell you that trials will not come. It would be a lie. Because they will come. But I've heard that that's where the true grit in us come alive. The elders who have gone on before us and the elders who are sitting on our pews now. Some of them are ready to hand you the baton and say, hey, can you run this race? Will you run this race? Somebody's giving you the baton. Will you run the race? I wish I had one to show you. Run the race. Run the race. Put on your tennis shoes and get to running. And let nothing stop you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. I have this saying in this room and I love it. I am a child of God. Lead me, guide me, walk beside me. I want Jesus on that great and glorious day to say, well done, Mary. Enter in into the joy of the Lord. Don't you want him to say that for you? Run your race. Again, let nothing and no one stop you. You have a race to run. Run it with endurance and active persistence active persistence you can do it i know you can god saved this best for last because so come on let's put on our shoes and let's run this race together we are a team we are a team the elders did the other strand now it's time for us to do it it's time for us to pick it up and keep running and your teammates are cheering you on. Yeah, you can do it. Run, run. Let's go. Yay. We can cheer, we can cheer you on because we are a team. We are in this together. And our coach, the one who we want to see on that glorious day is Jesus. When he's smiling and he's waiting with his arms wide open 
and saying, Come, enter into the joy of the Lord. You have made it. Don't we all want to say that? I ran my course. I ran my course. Was there, oh my God, stumbling blocks, hurdles, trials, tribulation, tears, sweat, blood? Yes. But I can count it all joy when you make it on over. Run your race. Run your race. You can do it. Take that leap of faith. You can do it. You are a winner. The Bible says we are overcomers. We are more than conquerors. You can do it. Lay aside anything and everything and run your race. As you can tell, I'm on. We have a race to run. So come on, ladies and gentlemen. Let's run our race. It's time to stop sitting on the sidelines and waiting for somebody else. It's time for you to do it. Because God, he saved his best for last. You are his best. So let's run. Let's run. Thank you so much for allowing me to take a few minutes of your time on this marvelous Monday to talk about I have a race to run. I hope that you got even a sentence would be enough for me that encourage you to put on your shoes and start running. God is counting on you. Your teammates are counting on you. Run your race. Thank you so much. I love you all. I pray you have a blessed and prosperous day. Until next time, be blessed. Bye-bye.